Hello, my name is Sai, and today I'll be teaching you how to create a motion graphic color morph in DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to start with a blank fusion composition. My timeline is set to 30 FPS, and I'm going to show you two different use cases for this type of shape morph. I'm going to be starting out with a text animation first, but you can skip to 7 minutes and 30 seconds if you want to see only the shape animation. So previously, the only method for this was Peach's text morph which was you could only use one color. You can just transition between two different colors like I'm gonna show you today. So first we're gonna start by grabbing a text plus node and I'm just going to write color, turn this size up. I'm going to use create O display and then I'm going to control C copy this text and control shift V create an instance of this text. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into this text right here. I'm gonna to go to the text box up here, right click, press D instance, go to the shading, go to the color group, right click and press D instance color group. I'm going to set this color to, or I'm going to change this text up here to say morph. I'm going to go over to the shading tab again and set the color to like a red. And I'm going to go back to this color here and I'm going to go to the shading tab and change this to a sort of blue color like so. Now I have the two pieces of text here. I'm going to add a dissolve node. I'm going to put the first piece of text that I want into the foreground here. I'm going to put the second text into the background here. And if we go over to the dissolve here, we go to the background foreground perimeter and we move it back and forth, it uses a dissolve to transition between the two inputs. So the foreground input uh, is equal to the value of one and the background input is equal to the value of zero. So I'm just gonna keyframe this about 30 frames out to zero. I'm gonna go open the spline tab real quick and I'm gonna select my keyframes and press S to smooth it out. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go over to set loop and press ping pong. So it just moves back and forth on repeat between the two pieces of text. Now I'm gonna grab a blur node I'm going to set the blur filter to Gaussian. I'm going to set the size to 8. I'm going to set the clipping mode to Domain. So now we're going to add a brightness contrast node. We're going to go over to these high and low values here and crush the values here. And like this. We're going to go over to the color channels up top and disable every channel except for the alpha channel. So if we play this back now, we can see that we're getting that sort of morph effect here. So what is the problem with this image right here? The problem is that the edges of the text have this kind of inner shadow fringe effect going on that we do not want. Um, and it does not look like the original text whatsoever. RGB values are also spilling into the alpha here, as we can see along these edges here. To prevent this from happening, we need to understand why this happens in the first place. So this has to do with the transparent values within the text itself. These values can vary between one through zero. One is solid pixels and zero is 100% transparent. The in-betweens of these are responsible for creating the gradation against the transparent background. And this is also referred to anti-aliasing. Original text itself before the blur has an alpha channel. And when we add that blur to it, it intensifies that gradation between the background. So if we open this here, we can see here we have that gradation effect going on here. But if we open up this blur, it intensifies that gradation between or the original RGB values and the alpha channel. So as we increase this blur, it brings it out more. In order for the blur to accurately display itself against the transparent background, it multiplies the colors against the current alpha pixels here. It takes the individual color value of each pixel and multiplies it with the corresponding alpha value, which results in this gradation blur. Something to note from this is that the original color values that are now semi-transparent are being shifted away from the true color values. So we can see here, if we just simply hover, if we go to the original morph text here and we view that and we hover over this color, we can see the color values are the same as the set values. But once we add this blur into the um, picture, we can see that the RGB values are changing along with the uh, alpha values, which is causing this issue here where it is not keeping the original colors when we do the brightness contrast. The gradation like process isn't necessarily a problem in itself because we are doing this intentionally when adding the blur. However, when doing color correction like this with the brightness contrast node, it assumes that the pre-multiplied values created from the blur are the original true colors from the text and it's not really taking care of the pre-multiplied image before a correction. So not taking care of the pre-multiplied image before correction causes this problem. So. In this case, we need to add back those original colors to remove the inner shadow fringe and pre-multiply the values after the correction to restore the proper alpha values to the text. 
we can do this by adding the alpha divide node. I'm going to add this alpha divide node after the blur, but before the brightness contrast. And if we put this into the viewer here, we'll notice that the um, this is kind of undoing the semi-transparent gradation process on or like unpre multiplying the blurred image. So from the blur, we have it goes about out about here. Like we can see on the color channels that there's a very, very small value. And if we preview the alpha channel here, we can see that it's undoing that gradation process all the way to the furthest edge that the blur reaches. It might be very not visible to you, but there are values there and the software is able to understand that. This is kind of like if anti-aliasing was turned off. This is referred to as the straight image. Once this process is like, once we add this alpha divide into here, we go back to our brightness contrast, we can notice if we play this back, all these color values are true to their original values, but we have this weird issue with this alpha here. And like I said before, we're just going to multiply back these alpha values. So we're going to add an alpha multiply and boom, it fixes that problem um, with the fringing and the weird RGB values spilling into the alpha. But yeah, to make this whole process easier, I created a macro called SC underscore simple choker. So here, on the top, we have a button that says easy choke up here. And the blur size starts out, uh, should start out at eight. I'm gonna type in eight here and I'm gonna set the clipping mode, make sure it's on domain. And I'm gonna press the easy choke button here. If we play this back, it brings the, it, it leaves the low value at zero. But if we bring this up, we can just do, it's essentially just these nodes, but compacted into one effect here or with some buttons that make it easier. For example, the easy choke here, it's connecting the high value to the low value and then appending this easy choke append value to the high value to kind of create a new range between the two values. So if we play this back here, move this here, it just makes it a lot easier to adjust instead of having to move two of the handles with each other. So I also over here, I have a control called shrink slash expand. If you move it more towards the left, it shrinks the text. If you move it more towards the right, it expands the text more. But yeah, you can just mess around with it however you want. I think this looks pretty nice, but now we're gonna move on to the shape morphs instead of the text morphs. So I'm gonna keep this simple choker here because this uh, this will work for both scenarios here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a background node. I'm gonna go to the text here and sample this color here. I'm gonna preview this uh, one here, add another background node and sample this color as well. I have two background nodes with two different colors. I'm gonna add an ellipse node. I connect it to both the background nodes. So we have two circles from the background uh, colors that we chose. And I'm gonna merge these on top of each other. So I'm gonna add another background node and make it transparent by decreasing the alpha to zero and add this to the background of the merge that I just added and pop this circle into the foreground and then copy and paste another merge and set this to the foreground here. And then I'm going to decrease the size of the blue circle. I'm gonna select both these at the same time so I can modify them at the same time. You can just press control you can select one and press control to select the other. Um, so I'm gonna kind of move them close to each other like this. I think it looks pretty nice. I'm gonna plug this into the simple choker. And as you can see here, the shapes are now, so before they're just kind of overlapping each other and now they kind of look like they're morphing into each other. We can increase this blur to kind of enhance that effect and create a gradient between the two shapes. So however we move this, it'll always look like it is sticking to the other shapes. But yeah, that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, just ask. If you also have any other kind of effect recommendations or effect tutorials you guys want to see, just let me know. Yeah, thank you for watching.